Wonderful to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining, Boo. Thank you, Katie. Very excited to be podcasting with you again. You were just on uh, my show, The Few with Boo, uh, not too long ago. So it's uh, wonderful to go full circle on this. Yes, I agree. Also, loads of pressure as for me as a host because you did such a great job interviewing me and so many fantastic questions. So <laughs> now no we get to pressure. reverse. There's only there's only action. There's only do. So there's never there's no no really you know right or wrong. We we actually you make a really great point because it's it's something that we tend to do as humans is uh, run this expectation matrix all the time. And and they, there's a saying which is. Uh, happiness is an expectation met and, and and we live in a world where we strive for unrealistic expectations and funnily enough we seem to struggle with happiness so uh, let's just have fun okay let's just have fun no pressure on the host amazing uh, I'd like to begin with what you call human 2.0 I'd love to know what do you mean by that and how can we become human 2.0 human 2.0 is just a way that aligns with technology where we have software updates. We have version two, version 13, iPhone 14, 15, and, and human 2.0 is to say, you know what, what if we have a similar purposeful upgrade where, where we can define where we are now and define what we could be because we, we constantly talk about change transformation at, but really it's a fairly ill-defined process in itself. Uh, we're not very good at defining, you know, what good looks like. So human 2.0 is, is saying, okay, well, if this is our, if this is our current state of, of who we are as a person, what does human 2.0 look like? And with all the emerging research, and as we understand more deeply, what makes us tick, how we're structured as human beings, how the brain, the heart, the gut, the universe, everything working in, in synchronicity, we have to ask ourselves, am I ready to leave my existing belief systems and go into to another world? And, and I, I went on that journey. I, I believed a certain, the world was a certain way and, and I had a certain role and there was a particular way to go about doing things to be successful. And then all of a sudden I realized, well, that's just my way. Not, it's not the way. Uh, and, and I think, you know, having that ability to step outside yourself uh, and and see you as a as an entity rather than as self you, that that allows you to make far better far better decisions and the way I guess when I kind of had my epiphany it was explained to me was always run your inner dialogue as if you're speaking to your best friend not you uh, because we tend to give much better advice to our friends about hey why are you hanging out with that toxic group that relationship's bad for you do it, go on, take a risk. You're worth it. You can, you can definitely get that job, but our in, inner monologue is not that our, our inner monologue is, is so unclear. We don't have those moments of clarity uh, because of the complexity of our thoughts. So, so that was a really quite an insight. Then once, once I sort of approached life that way, it became pretty easy where it becomes hard is when you start to say to yourself, well, if you were my best friend, Boo, I would probably tell you now that this is a time to make this decision. And that actually gets you to the point where you make the decision rather than uh, put it off or overthink it. And, you know, when you make decisions based like that, and then there's, you know, if it's a good decision, it's, it's pretty easy when you make a, a good decision and say, hey, if you were my best friend, I'd recommend you do this. Um, it's easy, but when you have the, when you have the response, which is, Hey, if you are my best friend, I would make this decision. And it's not, it's not going to be good for someone else. Uh, that's a bit harder to, to do, but equally, once you do it, then you can start the next step of the process, which is healing, grieving, uh, growing, uh, recovering, learning, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, the, the, you know, I, I the more I think about life and the more I think about performance, the more I realize that it's it's all about the decisions that we make. And Jeff Bezos says, you are who you choose to be. And I think that's very true. But but when when people say, you know, who do I choose to be? What they're not saying is, what are the decisions that I'm making? Because because choice is a decision, but it's it's binary. It's like 
choose yes or no. Whereas making a decision is quite complex. There's like seven steps to make a decision. And we don't really ever learn how to do that. All we learn is analysis and we go to university and we, and we learn to be expansive in our thoughts and, and look at things from different perspectives. But when it comes to being successful or, or living a life that you dream of, you know, yeah, it's great to read and it's great to be expansive, but you just got to get a whole lot of stuff done. You've got to get an awful lot done to go from not being the person you want to be, not having the business that you want to have. Whatever your A is, there's a lot of work to get to B. Uh, and that's that's why it's it's great to be well-read, but at the same time, it's it's even better to, to read and consume knowledge that supports your destination. If, if you... If you wanted to sail around the world solo as one of your your life dream, but you're constantly reading books about mountaineering, yet that's not that is not context. That's an extreme and obvious case for us as leaders and and in business, we tend to the the lines there are a little bit vague. Uh, so really, it's about you know what am I rather than consuming everything, what am I consuming that supports my journey? Uh, and it's it's kind of interesting because when I was a kid, I read thousands of books. Like I was a, an avid reader uh, and I believed in in books and I read them all through my twenties. And then technology happened and I stopped reading books. I don't even, I don't really read books. And, and I guess when you're trying to help people and mentor people, you're supposed to read a lot of books, right? You're meant to read a lot of books. I'm meant to read a lot of books, meant to be well read. Uh, and that's all great. But often you find that when you read stuff, it's kind of, kind of the same thing someone latches onto an idea and 20 different authors say the same thing in a different way uh you know so it's so it's so learning and, and and knowledge it's very important that you and and execution performance execution to get to a destination is very important given the amount of information available now that we consume contextualized information to deliver the outcome so that's a you know that's a very kind of long way of saying hey when it comes to living the life you want, you've got to make decisions. You can't be too invested in analysis paralysis. Once you take an action, then you can deal with the next situation you find yourself in. That happens anyway. You know, people who defer decisions, uh, eventually the decision gets made for you. You know, if, if you defer the decision to leave a job, uh, you will eventually lose your job because you will not be invested in it in a way that delivers an outcome. Right. So you, you hear that phrase, you know, um, he had it coming or she had it coming. Like, like, like that's your energy, right? That's your, your, what, what you put out there is, is, is what you receive. So yeah. So expectation management, make sure that, 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 that what you want is achievable in a time frame that is, is, is achievable. Uh, consume knowledge that accelerates that journey and make sure that you have plenty of people around you that will you know, help you manage your biases and, and your, the way that you perceive yourself in the world rather than the way the world perceives you in it. Amazing. You shared so many interesting points. I was trying to like recap them in my head from shifting the beliefs to then consuming information, like you said, that supports your growth and actually more about implementation rather than just passive consumption. Then you also talked about that inner dialogue and speaking as if you're speaking to best friend, the importance of decision-making to build the identity because yes, choosing who you want to be, like you said, is binary, yes, no sort of thing versus the decisions that actually support that. So I'm curious, what are those seven steps that you said that it takes to make a decision or take the decision? Well, the most, the most important one is where our decision starts and that is perception, right? So, so perceptions are generally subconscious, which means they're driven by our, so, but, this is my interpretation, right? There's an enormous amount of, of information out there as to the conscious mind, the subconscious, uh, the unconscious, the triune brain. Like there's a gazillion different ideas around uh, around how we how we think. So I, I try and rely on the fMRI research and and the neuroscience around that's that has some sort of clinical basis to it. But if you look at the way that we make decisions, uh, it might be in an fMRI when they they're showing fearful images or happy images. You see the you see the elements of the brain that that illuminate around the amygdala and around the emotion center, uh, and then our logic kicks in and we when we make a decision. 
for many of us, we think we're very rational and we make rational decisions, uh, but we don't. We we rationalize how we feel. So every every decision starts starts in a, with a feeling, uh, which is why successful people tend to habitually be successful. They are consistently successful. And when we're in a rut, we tend to be in a rut for a while, or it's a debt, or people call it the downward spiral, right? Oh, you're in a downward spiral. And what's happening there is our decision-making loop is reinforcing how we feel rather than breaking it. When we talk about positive mindset, positive psychology, what we're saying is, can we shape our perception by thinking positively? And while the answer to that is yes, it's a yes, but, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So if we start with the way we we perceive, so we perceive, you know, in, in caveman times, we perceive a rustle, a rust, a rustle in the bushes, uh, that that's a threat, right? Now it may just be the women of the tribe coming back from uh, from their gathering expedition, but because our fundamental drive is to survive, our initial perceptions are generally negative. In fact, eighty five percent of our subconscious thoughts are are negative, uh, and that's by design. I'm not it's not actually a something that happens to us that that's what we're managing right so so our perception is generally negative when something happens so from that perception we start to rationalize so oh my senses that my my gut feel my heart the 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 non-brain related neurons in my body go oh what's that something's going on um we start to think about it and when we think about it we're rationalizing is that a is that, a, is that a tiger? Well, I've heard tigers in the bushes before and that didn't sound like a tiger. Is it a is it a woolly mammoth? No, it doesn't sound. But that's happening very, very, very quickly. And that's where experience and training comes in. The more rustle of the bushes we've heard from um, saber-toothed tigers, the, more, the, the, the quicker we can say that's not a saber-toothed tiger and it's safe. Because when we invest in a negative decision and we and we and it's a saber-toothed tiger, but it's not, it's just the... It's just the hunter. It's just the gatherers coming home. Yeah, we probably ran away, got lost, dropped our spear. A whole lot of inefficient work was was created. So, so our perception is 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 by and large negative unless we're trained out out of that. So when we when we rationalize that, we project. Okay, so we project into into this future state. So we perceive there's a saber to We perceive a rustle. We process it as a tiger. My future is I'm going to die unless I run, and and. So that's what we do. We make a decision. So the fourth step is a decision. Uh, the decision then equals some sort of action. Without action, there's no decision. It's it's pontificating. Um, the action in this case would be would be running or the traditional fight, flight, or freeze response. Uh, the the running would equal a result. The result would be I am no longer near the saber toothed tiger, or I the result is I feel safe. Uh, the impact of that is what happens in the world around us. So if it was a safe environment, the impact is on the gatherers coming home. Their perception is, why did Boo run away from us? What did I do wrong? What have I done? Why is it, have I, did I annoy him? Did I say something wrong? And now their perception cycle kicks in and they start rationalizing, projecting and coming up with all of these ideas. So we've had an impact on the on the tribe now purely based on our perception that something was a threat that wasn't. And then what happens is those perceptions are, 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 are reinforced. Uh, we come back to the village, we have a conversation or we don't, we ignore each other because you're, why are you angry at me? Well, you, you ran away and no one, no one talks about it. And over time, because our brain reprograms itself every night, we wake up and everything's kind of okay. Um, so, so that's that's the traditional decision making cycle. Now it's all well and good to to every day wake up with our positive psychology and say every every today when there's a rustle in the bushes, I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to run away. But the reality is, when that rustle comes and you think it's a tiger, you're going to run away. All right. So what we have to do is we have to break that cycle somehow. And I was taught this as a fighter pilot, and whilst I didn't have awareness of it at the time, what I realized was after we flew every mission, we did something called a, a debrief. And what that really means is we sit down and we ask four simple questions. What did we set out to achieve on the mission? What actually happened? What was the result? Why was there a result there? And what am I going to do about it? 
and the gap between the objective and the result is the execution gap. And that's where the conversation happens, right? So we're not, we're not emotionally attached to the outcome. We're not emotionally attached to the result. We we're attached to the gap and we want to run small gaps all the time. And the only way you can reduce a gap is to reduce expectation or increase performance. So usually if you're not getting where you want to in life or you feel stuck, it's, it's a bit of both, a little bit of moderate my expectations as to what I can achieve this week and increase my performance a little bit. We tend to over rely on performance. Like, Hey, let's just drive up. Let's work harder, work harder. It doesn't, doesn't work. And it doesn't work because our, our perception is, well, no matter how hard I work, I'm still not making progress. So therefore I'm going to procrastinate. I'm going to step away. I'm going to give up. I'm going to lose motivation. So the fourth step is to stop that from happening as we take an action. So what's my objective? What's my result? Why does that gap exist? And what am I going to do about it? And when we say, what am I going to do about it? It's not, what am I going to do about it next week? What am I going to do about it in, in my life? What's this big thing I'm going to do? It's just one small thing. And the small thing uh, may be, I'm not going to, I'm going to take two steps away from the bush. I'm going to watch it. And the minute I see a saber tooth tiger, I'm going to run. Or I know that if it's between those two trees, nine times out of 10, it's the hunter gatherer. You know, there's always going to be a small percentage chance that it's a saber tooth tiger. But because we debriefed it, we've built in a buffer. Maybe it's, maybe it's climb up a tree next time we hear it rather than run away. But either way, we've created an action that delivers a learning outcome and allows us to be better in the way that we perform next time. Now, the person who was afraid, but from from the saber tooth tiger, you know, their job may be to go hunting saber tooth tigers, and and they can't because they're too scared. But now they figured out they can climb a tree and be safe. They're probably going to be better at doing that next time. And it's important for them to do that because they feed the village, the village thrives and humanity survives and, and, and away we go. So, you know, replace saber tooth tiger with a bad boss at work, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, someone you're interested in, uh, your children, a uh, trying to study for an exam, write a book, learn to run marathon, replace saber tooth tiger with, with uh, something that you, you have to do in life. That's where the learning comes so the debrief breaks the cycle between the impact of our actions and how how we perceive that environment at a later date. And that's where that bit has to happen for positive psychology to work. Um, because if we're just positive all the time, but we don't get the results, you, you can't trick your brain. It's a supercomputer. It's much smarter. You, the, 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 the positive thoughts part of the brain's 50 thoughts a second the rest of the brain is 11 million. So the, the 11 million, which is the autopilot brain, it, it can't be tricked by positive psychology. It needs to win. Positive psychology is great because it points the firepower, points the 11 million processes a second in the right direction. And that's really important. So that's where positive psychology is important. The belief that I can do this and then all of my neural energy goes into it. But if we fail... Yep. The first time we get a free pass, the second time start to think about it. But over time, our autopilot subconscious is like, yeah, whatever, man, you go, go be positive. And then we start to have these feelings, not thoughts, feelings that are negative. <laughs> so positive thoughts have to be reinforced by actions that deliver results. And the easiest way to do that is set yourself up to win. I mean, Positive. I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to the gym and exercise this morning. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to. I'm going to go do it. I know for the whole week, I haven't done it. Every morning, I get up. I couldn't be bothered. <clears throat> Excuse me. So reset the expectation. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to walk to the gym. I'm not going to go. I'm just going to walk to it, and I'm going to come home. It's easy. It's nothing. I've got no expectation at all. Alarm goes off. You wake up. Uh, well, I know all I'm going to do is walk there. I'm not going to go and sweat for 45 minutes. I'm, I'm happy. I committed to walking to the gym and you'll get up and you'll walk to the gym. And there's a high probability that now you're there at the door, you will probably walk in. And even if you go and, and knock out, you know, uh, three sets of 12 reps of bench press or squat and you leave, you have just surpassed your expectations. So your positive thoughts are now reinforced by action and a positive outcome. 
and your brain starts to say, hey, you know what? This is actually pretty good. I, I believe, I believe what you're thinking now. And the next morning you'll say, tomorrow I'm going to get up, go to the gym. I'm going to do three reps, uh, 12 reps, three sets. So basically what you did today, I'm going to go and do that again tomorrow. You get there, walk in, you do your few sets and you go, well, you know what? I'm going to throw in another, I'm going to throw in another exercise today. And then over time, you just have this incremental, these incremental wins. Now, somewhere along the way, you're going to fail because you're going to you're going to do that like 20 days in a row, and, and you're going to be sitting there going, "I'm going to bench press a, an elephant," uh, and you're going to fall backwards again. But that's okay. Then just reset the expectation the next day, a little bit lower. Uh, so setting expectations that can be met is setting the low expectation isn't anything to be afraid of. That doesn't mean you are not performing at a high level consistently underperforming the expectation is where the damage gets done. And that's the difference between high performance and deep performance. High performance is, is always have a stretch target, always strive, always push, push, push. Um, and, and that is true. We don't want to, we don't want to have the bar too low, but we're not all high performers. We, you know, there's a lot of research that says, statistically maybe five to 10% of us have a high performing kind of mindset, but we're pretty hard work, you know, and we're, we're kind of annoying to be around and we make organizations kind of difficult. Uh, most of us aren't. And for most of us that aren't, we can be high performers. The, the air force and fighter pilots are not high performers. We're pretty average. We're, we're notoriously average. We're above average at sport, above average at school. That's it. We're not exceptional at anything. But you put above average and you grow it every day for two years, a little bit of growth, you create exceptional. And, and that, I guess, is, is the money ball approach where, you know, it's the it's the consistent, consistent above average that delivers exceptional. Yes. And what you just said right now with the incremental progress and setting yourself up to win, I was seeing in my mind my morning routine because I know that when I began with the coach, I was really trying to do this like half an hour meditation, half an hour yoga every single morning. And it just didn't work like over and over again. I'd manage a week and then I'd fall off and then I got tight, et cetera, et cetera. And what really worked for me is exactly what you said is I just thought I'm just going to start with something that I cannot fail at. So I did two minutes every day after reading Atomic Habits, right? Two minutes every day of meditation for about three months. <laughs> and then I did five in it. And now... I have this morning routine with like my 20 minute meditation, 20 minutes to 30 minute exercise, cold shower, blah, blah, blah. That takes an hour and a half to two hours, get up super early, et cetera. But if I tried to build that from what I had before, which was literally get up and go to work within 10 minutes, it would be, I don't know, maybe not impossible, but a lot harder and building it up incrementally, which is exactly what you shared. And I did this same thing, mindset, all the rest in my business also wow, it's so much easier. You really do set yourself up to win and you feel so great when, you know, I finish my to-do list every day. And when I started my business, I had a list of 50 things. And at the end of the day, I remember feeling, you know, hopeless and despair because I hadn't finished everything. And now and I the just, list gets bigger, right? The list just gets bigger. Just, and now I shrink it. I look do. at the space and I fill up how much can actually fit in that space realistically. And that's it. And it, you know, there's this, there's a couple of human traits that feed into it, right? There's the instant gratification, obviously, which is, you know, I just, I just want to be an awesome marathon runner now. I just want to be able to meditate. I just, I just want to get up at 4am, even though I've been getting up at seven and, and you'll do it once or twice, but it's just, it, it, it sucks so much. I, I was watching, um, I was, uh, there was a, something came up on, um, LinkedIn the other day, it was a speaker and he was talking about successful people. And he said, I go to the gym every single day and it sucks. I hate it. And I've hated it my whole life, but I do it. And, he, and his philosophy was, you know, the difference between you and me as a successful person is you think it sucks and you don't do it. I think it sucks and I do it. And I think my thoughts were, well, you know, yes, but, but equally it doesn't have to suck what 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 you're doing is not how it needs to be done like it's great and and there are plenty of successful people who are you know 
a term I, I learned in my Catholic schooling was self-flagellating. Uh, there's there's plenty of people that love to give them give themselves a whip, but again, it's just the minority. So there's not you you can't win in business if you feed the minority. You you have to be able to create a a system that works for everybody. And and again, if 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 you're if if and the same goes in your peer group, it's we all rise to the level of of those that we associate with. So it's great if you are a high performer. But the damage that comes with being an individual high performer is is high. There is there is uh, loneliness, solitude, uh, same thing, I guess. Uh, there's uh, you know uh, broken relationships, a trail the, the the squash everyone on the way up the corporate ladder. Uh, and look, that's all. That's fine. That's a way. That yep, that is a way of 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 achieving your life dreams at the expense of other. But there's plenty of people out there who are incredibly successful, incredibly wealthy that enhanced everyone along the journey. And I think that's what the world needs now. The the, the win at all costs mentality is producing what the world the world we're living in now. You know, there's a lot of war. Uh, there's a massive poverty, a um, wealth gap. Uh, everyone is struggling, even though the world itself is much safer. Uh, it's a it's a much we're not going to walk out and have Mr. Saber to the tiger come out of the bushes anymore. So, yeah. So I think, I think where we're at now is, you know, is a, is this collective growth model, collective performance where we lift everyone, uh, not high performers and everyone else. Yes. I was still musing and reflecting on what you just said. It's true that, um, I mean, I guess I define high performance differently in my mind, but I think I agree with your philosophy of deep performance. I'm curious, what are some of your daily habits or weekly habits that you think enable you to have this sort of deep performance in your work? Uh, I don't have any. Any, habits. none, zero, not even reviewing your day and your week? <laughs> no, <Any> not? <laughs> I don't have any habits. Well, look, I don't think I have habits, but what I do is I have the habit of that loop. I always have a habit of of reflecting on my performance. And and I think that the probably the, 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 um, biggest mindset shift for me probably in the last 10 years is to go easy on myself is to let myself do nothing let myself get lost in the phone um but to consciously say did i get everything done before i do this or have i got time to to do it later uh you know why don't i why don't i have habits um because the the life that i live is hard to develop have i'm on airplanes i'm flying all over the all over the states of doing keynotes I'm, i've got you know virtual meetings that are at nine o'clock at night or five o'clock in the morning yeah i i get back from speaking on the west coast uh, to to miami at four o'clock in the morning after leaving at two in the afternoon i don't have a i don't have a life that says right every morning do this every afternoon do that it just doesn't exist so i i just have themes and my themes are you've had too much junk food go eat lots of healthy food or fast you're, you've been sitting on your ass for too long, go walk for two hours. And if you feel like running on the walk, run. You haven't lifted weights for a while, go down and find a weight room and just do some weights. Like it's, I, I my habit is the, is a, to me, I guess, is the yin and the yang. It's like, hey, you got too much yang, throw some yin at it. You know, I've tried, I've tried, you know, meditating and I love, I do love yoga and I, and I enjoy the, the, the process of it. But I don't really have thoughts that are so, I don't, I don't feel like I need to meditate to get clarity. I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like I have clarity most of the time. Um, and I, and I, and I feel stressed about stuff, but it's stuff you're meant to stress about. Like I'm a business owner and a CEO. I got to stress about money coming in and paying the bills and growing a business and helping people believe they can do a better job. Um, got to be a good dad, you know, but that is stressful. It's not overly stressful, but it's enough stress to get you off your back, off your backside to go on and do things. And it's the, you know, again, as a as a fighter pilot, maybe we're lucky. We're taught about the peak stress curve. You never, you don't want to be under aroused or, or over aroused. You want to find that sweet spot. Uh, and you know, and as a as a temperament, I have a laid back temperament. I'm, I would I would err towards being lazy rather than pedantic and busy. So you know, so for me. I'm, I'm, I, I speak to every, I, I have a lot of podcasts. I speak to a lot of successful people and a lot of 
meditation and, and journaling and gratitude and all of this stuff, which is great. And everyone every, to each their own. Well, I'm not saying whose way of doing it is a way of doing it at all. Um, but I think for me, just, I, I feel like I have a good sense of, Oh, I've just taken too much here. Let go too much there. I need to swap that. I've, I've been too busy. Haven't invested much time in my kids. I got to, I got to really make an effort to spend some time with the kids. And it's, you know, someone told me once a psychologist, it, it's quality time is not the amount of time. It's, it, it's not, it's not setting aside quality time for the sake of quality time. It's literally quality time. It's, every minute is high value, right? Uh, so, so that's the other, the, the other thing I guess is, is understanding the value of each minute of the day. Like I hate, I hate wasting time. And, and I, when other people waste time, I, I sit there and I'm like, those, you're just not going to get that time back to perp, to, to intentionally use time to relax, to intentionally use time to let your brain kind of recover. That's fine. But, but to not be able to get out of the door in time, you know, because you, you've just got no idea of how to organize your life. I mean, that to me is, is a waste of time. There's a great, a great study around high performance, uh, which, which was uh, done many years ago and they, effectively deconstructed 638,000 high performers. And, and they, they discovered that what these people have in common is they can get 400% more done in a day. And, and that to me is, that to me is we can get there. You, you don't have, you don't have to do the 400% a day. These, this, this was the Steven Spielbergs of the world, the Michael Jordans, the, 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 the hall of famers in sport, the top physicians in the world. It was a it was a cross section of every every industry. But let's get two hundred percent more. Why why not between the age of twenty and forty, live forty years worth of life instead of twenty? And that's and that's what I've done in my life. I've squeezed so much in. I've done so much that I'm just fifty next year, and I've got nothing left. I really want to do apart from, you know, give back give back to my family and, and give back to people hopefully so they can ha have a life that when they get to 50, they say, man, I ticked every box I ever wanted to tick. That's amazing. And I love how you were saying the balancing side, just tuning in with yourself, seeing what's out of balance and readjusting because I feel that's way more useful than habits. I think for me in terms of habits, morning routine, and then I just do a daily review and weekly review, but the rest I'm, I'm like you, I like to see what's off, who haven't I spoken with in a while? If it's a friend and need to catch up with and just tune in because life isn't uh, all in a box. <laughs> and so we need to go a little more with the flow of Yeah, life. I didn't even, brushing my teeth, I do it twice a day, but it's always at different times. Like the, even that to me is not a habit. You know, having a shower is not even a habit. It's it's just, yeah, it feels right. It's about time to do that. It's about time to do this. You know, it's, it, it, and that, and, and I guess for me, it's because, when I wake up, I know I need, I know what I need to focus on. I know exactly what I, what I need to do. And I just get on with it. And, and then it's done. You know, people say, get up at four in the morning. I've got a two-year-old. Sometimes I'll get up at four in the morning because he wakes and I'll do what I need to be do. But the next day I'll sleep into eight because I'm tired. You know, like it's, it, it, and sometimes if you set all these expectations to, to do things all the time, you're introducing more stress. You're, you're creating the stress that you're doing these practices to remove. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, you know, oh, I'm stressed. I need to meditate because I'm so stressed about not meditating on the right time. You know what I mean? Like it's, again, it comes down to setting expectations that you can't meet. And that is, that is, I think, fundamentally what leads to a lack of motivation. It's why when you see actors and they, they're in those gossip magazines and they're, bellies hanging out they're like oh look at jared butler his gut hanging out after he was ripped for this yeah because he was he just spent seven months getting a rip for a movie he's absolutely exhausted he's sick of it he hasn't had a burger and now he's gone and you know he's he had a lot of ying and now he's doing a lot of yang like there's a, there's just an equilibrium in the world i mean that's why these concepts exist and if you if you're able to navigate your equilibrium uh and, and you can actually get more done because you, your give and take is just much more refined. 
this is genius. I'm going to have to rethink about um, a lot of things. I think I'm already sort of doing this a bit, like tuning in intuitively um, in a lot of different areas. But it's like you said, you can get a lot more done if you tune in to where the focus is and yeah, be a lot more flexible in your approach. And yeah, yeah have, a, have a cold shower, jump in an ice bucket, but don't do it every day because it's, it's stress. It's it's a different type of stress. Do it, do it when you feel like... D- do it when you I feel tired today. I'm just because every day your body is going to throw at you a different energy state. You're going to wake up in a different energy state. We are, we are not a constant. So because we are not constant, it's very hard for us to to live with well, it's why we strive for routine, right? It's it's hopefully if I have routine, I'm going to be I'm going to be able to manage and control my energy. But but you can't so if you if you if you wake up uh tired then rest all right cuz the next day you will wake up feeling good uh you know like the dave goggins of embrace the pain and 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 all of that sort of stuff right just embrace the suck um just just live in pain and you'll be be successful yep you will but you don't have to i think that's wonderful um, Boo, I'd love to like just talk for about 10 more hours. I might even make to my exception of bringing a, a guest that's already been on the show back on the show just to cover some <laughs> more stuff, maybe a year from now, see how things are going. What do you want to leave our listeners with? What would be the last thing you want to say to leave our listeners with today? Yeah, I think, you know, for me, I'm definitely coming to this um, realization that, you know, getting getting what you want is is what you believe not not what you do so if if you believe you can be an astronaut and go to mars that's a big one right you you will get there but it is going to be an, an inordinately full journey to get there you you will need to optimize every single minute of your life uh to get there now the world might throw something at you you might have asthma or something and you and you and you can't be an astronaut that goes to Mars. Well, guess what? That just wasn't, that's what you thought was meant to be your life, but it's not really what it's meant to be. So lean into the next thing. You know, I lost my, I lost my career as a fighter pilot due to an autoimmune disease. And at the time I thought, well, hang on from, since I was five, this was meant to be me. This is my purpose in life, be a fighter pilot. But guess what? It's not. I did a whole bunch of other stuff that I would never have done. I lived all over the world. I started a multi-million dollar business, three of them. I've I've um, had incredible experiences, eaten the most amazing food, had more money than you could even think about how to spend. I've had no money. I've had every extreme, you know, and, and ultimately what you realize is life just goes on. The whole rest of the world doesn't really care. It just keeps going. Uh, so you start to realize that this this whole ebb and flow of life, ebb and flow of money, ebb and flow of energy, ebb and flow of relationships, just let it go. Just don't control it. <laughs> and when we set those expectations, which is important because expectation is our where, where we're going. We, we, we are inherently wired to want to move forward. Just understand that you're not very good at that. No, no human is. We don't process time and we don't understand what's involved in in getting things done particularly well just go easy on yourself just give yourself set yourself up to win that's the key set targets that allow you to win i'm not talking about participation medal here i'm not talking about you know let's let's just every day say walk to the gym walk to the gym walk to the gym and don't do anything else the expectation has to ratchet but do it do it in a deliberate purposeful way um don't don't just have a bar here which is no and a bar here which is done that that world is really hard that's very hard to stay motivated in that world wonderful thank you so much boo this was so insightful i learned a lot so i'm sure the listeners have to thank you so much for joining the show today thank you thanks katie pleasure take care